Hey guys, welcome back to Core 4. Today we'll be solving IGCC Computer Science Theory, Paper 1. So the paper code is 0478-11 from May, June 2019. So let's get started. Okay, so first question. Hexadecimal is used for MAC addresses. So part of a MAC address is given here. Um, 9, 7, 5C, and E1. So each pair of digits is stored as a binary in an 8-bit register. So they're asking us to show what the binary register stores for each pair of the given digits. So here we have to convert each digit here into binary. So first is 9, 7. So the binary value for 9 is given here, which is 1001. So we have 1001 followed by the binary value for 7, which is 0111. Next, 5C. 5 is 0101. And C is 1100. E is 1110. And 1 is 0001. The conversion to binary of each hexadecimal digit carries one mark. So you'll get 6 marks in total if you write all these correct. So next, explain what is meant by a MAC address. So this question carries four marks. So each point you write gives you one mark. So if you write any four of these points given here, you'll get all the marks. Okay. So MAC address is media access control okay. and is used to identify a device. It is a unique address and it is a static address, meaning it does not change. It is set by the manufacturer. And the first part of the address is the manufacturer number or ID. And the second part of the address is the serial number or ID of the device. Next. So give two examples where hexadecimal can be used. So we can write memory dumps or debugging and HTML color codes. But the other answers given here are also correct. So next is question two. So Rajesh creates a logic circuit. He uses three different logic gates in a circuit. Each logic gate has a maximum of two inputs. He describes the logic of each gate. So A, the only time the output will be one is when both inputs are one. So the only logic gate which follows this is AND gate. Because when we give both the inputs as one, only when first input and the second input are one, we get an output as one. So this is how you draw an AND gate. Okay. So B, the only time the output will be one is when both inputs are zero. So the only gate that follows this is the NOR gate, which is the opposite, which gives the opposite output of an OR gate. So we have to draw an OR gate with a small circle at the end. So this is how a NOR gate looks like. Next, the only time the output will be zero is when both inputs are one. This is for a NAND gate. As you can see, what's written here is the complete opposite of what is given in, in sub-question A. So that's why it is NAND, the opposite of AND. And this is how you draw an NAND gate. You draw the AND gate and then add a circle at the end. Okay, so next, third question. So five descriptions of different input or output devices are given in the table. So we need to complete the table by stating which device is described. Okay. So first, um, the first description says this is an input device that works by shining a light onto the surface of the document and the light source is automatically moved across the document and the reflected light is captured by mirrors and lenses. So this is, of course, a 2D scanner. Next, this is an input device where a laser or a light source is moved across an object. The width, height, and depth of the object are measured to allow a model to be created. 
So this is a 3D scanner. Okay. So this is a large input device that is usually fixed to a wall. A user can calibrate the device to make sure the sensors align with the projected image. The user can use either their finger or a special pen to make selections. So this is an interactive whiteboard. So next, um, this is an output device that uses many small mirrors to reflect light towards a lens. This will display an image. So this is a projector. Next, this is an output device that creates an image by building layer upon layer of material. So this is a 3D printer. So next, fourth question. Okay. So Lola is concerned about the risks to a computer when using the internet. She wants to use some security methods to help protect her computer from the risks. So we need to identify a security method that she could use for each of the following risks. And then each security method must be different. So if we repeat the method, we use for the previous sub question, no marks will be awarded. Okay, so describe how each security method will help protect Lola's computer. So first we have to find a security method for against the computer virus. So we can use antivirus software or anti malware software here. This scans the computer system for viruses, has a record of known viruses, and removes or quarantines any viruses that are found. It also checks data before it is downloaded and stops the download if virus is found or it wants the user that virus may be present if it's suspicious. Another possible answer you can give here is firewall or proxy server. Next, hacking. Okay. For hacking, we can use two-step verification or two-factor authentication. This is when extra data is sent to the device, which is preset by the user, making it more difficult for, hack for the hacker to obtain it. So this data has to be entered into the same system. So if attempted from a remote location, it will not be accepted. Other possible answers we can give here are passwords, biometrics and again firewalls and proxy servers if not given in the first sub question next spyware so for again spyware we can use anti-spyware software or anti-malware software if anti-malware is already given already written down for a previous option you cannot write it again here so an anti-spyware or malware scans the computer for the spyware and it removes or quarantines any spyware that is found and can prevent spyware from being downloaded. This is very similar to an antivirus. So other answers that you can give here are drop down boxes, on screen or visual keyboards. Again, two step verification or two step authentication, firewall or proxy server. So question B. Lola is also concerned that the data she stores could be subject to accidental damage or loss. So they're asking three ways it could possibly be damaged or lost. So one is human error, as in us accidentally deleting a file. Second could be a power failure or power surge. Third could be physical damage because of natural calamities like fire or flood. And other answers that could be given here are given below. Give two methods that Lola could use to keep her data safe from accidental damage or accidental loss. So here we have to give two pro prevention or precautionary measures that she could use. So one is following correct procedures like ejecting offline devices and regularly saving to prevent corruption, or deletion or loss of data. Next is keeping data in a fireproof, waterproof or protective case so that external factors will not affect it. And other answers that could give you marks are also given below.